The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 14th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and those bears are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. <clears throat> Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Please send it off early. And in the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Now, of course, if you're inside our Tigers Den, well, then any and every ping will do so let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific tuesday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to the show sea of green out there all the sectors inside the s p 500 all the u.s indices that we track are trading to the upside the dow's up 534 s p 89 nasdaq 319 russell's up 79 semi's up 122 tranny's up 509 we'll figure out where all these are headed to gold's up 19 bucks silver's up 83 cents uh, light speed crude is up a buck 19. Uh, natural gas is back four cents. So the 30 treasuries up two points, trading out at 115.10. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside Mercado Libre, 55 bucks, 4% move. BlackRock, nearly 5%, 32 bucks there. Monolithic Power Systems, 29 bucks, 5 and 6 tenths percent. IDEX Labs, 25 bucks, nearly 6%. Equinox, 25 bucks, 3% move there. To the downside, MicroStrategy off 3%, 15 bucks, 12% for Celsius Holdings, not 12%, 12 bucks. McKesson Corp down 10, 2 and a quarter percent. Uh, you got C Limited. ADS is down eight bucks, 17 percent move there. So we got movers and we've got some shakers. But let's begin the day by looking at those equity future contracts. We're going to switch the panels here, get a feel for where things are headed, what they're doing, what they're not doing. So the first place that we're going to start up. Now, we've got the daily and the weekly time frame charts out here on the daily time frame. First of all, there's no A to B equals CD pattern out here. Even if I were to try to force one, I've got to use the same candle, the same swing point, if you would, um, as the high and the low. And Stevie just does like to do that. And it's really not an A to B equals CD pattern. It's just a straight move to the upside. Well, here's what we know. Where's the next level of resistance in the ES mini? That's its TD nine count breakdown level. When you close above one, which the ES mini did on Friday, you'd likely go to the next one. That's it. That's at 4566. 4566 is a likely next price target. We're 4515 right now. If you look at the weekly time frame chart, price now is trading above the top of its profile out there. That and its green oscillator and change line. That is a bullish outcome. So there's nothing here in the daily or weekly that suggests that price should not make it all the way up to that 4566 level. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ is trading above. It's negated its TD9 count top. That's assuming it doesn't sell off uh, and uh, close below the uh, low from a couple of days ago. Doesn't look like that's a likely outcome. And price is trading above 15.71975. That's its TD9 count breakdown level. Well, all we have to do is look at the weekly time frame chart. And we can see the weekly time frame chart shows prices above a green oscillator and change line. Tells you have a rising 
price oscillator above zero. Those are simply bullish conditions. That doesn't not going to help us identify a top out there. We've got these other tools for that. But what I can share with you inside the NQ, inside the ES Mini, those are very bullish conditions. The weekly chart on the Dow, YM out there, not the same condition. Neither is it for the Russell 2000. But in the case of the NQ, we know that price is trading inside its sell zone. And the reason it's a sell zone is because it's a bearish structured profile. And a bearish structured profile, we've got the center where both buyers and sellers reside closer to the top where the sellers are located. So the sell zone is between 15,727 and 16,130. No reason for it to not be able to make its way up to that 16,130 level. If we take a look at the Dow, again, no A to B equals CD pattern, just a straight line type move out there. The Dow going to go target or should target 35,357. 35,357 is, is its next TD9 count breakdown level. On the weekly chart, price is trading above the top of its profile. It's a red oscillator and change line. That tells us that right now, I'm just on a weekly basis, have to consider this a counter trend move. It does increase the odds of a further counter trend move to the upside. So that 35,357 looks to be locked and loaded. And if we take a look at the Russell 2000, its price target out there is 1800.90. That's its TD nine count breakdown level. If price is able to close above that, it joins the ranks of the Dow, the YM, the NQ, the ES mini, and likely heads to higher ground. That's great, Steve, but where's higher ground? Well, there we turn to the weekly time frame chart, and there it's that weekly profile level. And for the Russell 2000, 1841.90. So if we get a close above 1800.90, likely what we see is a move to 1841.90. And that covers the daily and the weekly equity future contracts. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to flip back to my black background screens. We're going to go take a look at New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator. I know Peter in Park City was probably going to ask me about it. He hasn't yet, uh, but I'm thinking maybe he was going to. Oh, he did put in there, New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator, please. How about that? You, you got to it before I could read your mind. But in any event, let's go take a look at it. Right now, the conditions that are in place are the exact conditions that you and I have discussed for the last couple of uh, – for about the last um, – four, five, six days out here, that's when that advanced client oscillator, that's a difference between the 19 and the 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. That oscillator, when it gets above plus 150, gets into the overbought condition. Now, in this case here, this is back on the trading day of November the 6th. Uh, November the 3rd, my apology. November the 3rd, the reading gets up to 274.37. Now, the cool thing is that tells us that we're likely going to see higher highs. Well, that's unfolding today out there. It's always the way that it has worked in the past. That's the way that it worked this time as well. But now the key thing is, do we make these higher highs and the advanced decline oscillator ends up making lower highs. That is how the other tops have formed out here inside the New York Stock Exchange. Now, we've got to go back and research those tops, see what patterns were present. We can do that at another date. We're not going to do that as we speak right now. But as we speak right now, with regard to this setup here, we just have to be on guard. I don't want it to sound like it is just bullish to the uh, end of kingdom come or anything along those lines. Now, if this pattern gets negated, which it can, in order for it to get negated, Gated, we need to see that advanced client oscillator get above the plus 274 level out there. Is that going to unfold? I don't know. I don't think it's likely to unfold, but anything can happen out there. This is not something to act on, but what it this does show us is the pattern that has been present for the last three years is present right now. What else is there for me to share with you? I don't think anything else on these screens. So when we come back to the break, we only have one request. Why don't we get that request out of the way? Uh, of course, I'll feel more. I'll feel more. But if we don't have more, I've got things to, for us to take a look at. Currency pairs. Let's take a look at the euro, the yen, the pound. Take a look at gold, the GDX, things along the those uh, lines. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Tigers, have you ever wondered what it would be like to trade right alongside Larry Pesavento? We'll wonder no more. Wednesday, November 15th, Larry Pesavento will be hosting a live trading webinar. From 8 a.m. to noon, look over Larry's shoulder as he analyzes potential trades and sets them up. Not only will you get a front row seat to the mind of a veteran trader, but you'll get to interact with Larry live as he plays his trades and goes through key material that has aided him in his profession. Go to the front page of TFNN.com, sign up for the service, and enjoy. TFNN, educating investors. 
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for Tesla, TSLA. This is for uh, David in Panama City. David is long Tesla, and the question is, if the gap is filled, what do you do then? The gap he's talking about would be which price is trading into right now. That's a gap that formed on the trading day of uh, October the 19th. Gaps down. So the gap that he's referring to is getting up to the 24208 level. That would be the bottom of the uh, gap. What we can see out here, uh, David, is that we've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, that uh, A point, or B point, I should say, has volume of uh, under 90 million shares. So far today, it's done 62 million shares. So it's got the volume confirming an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, that gives you the one-to-one -one price projection around 237. Um, with regard to Tesla, if we take this back, for, so the first, to answer your question specifically, um, what you're looking for, because there's an A to B equals CD pattern, doesn't matter anything really about the gap, is that if you were to see a bearish reversal candle, and you don't have that today, today is a gap to the upside, uh, that is a bullish signal, it's really a wide-ranging bar if we fill in that gap, so to speak, and so and that is not how A to B equals CD patterns uh, complete out there. So odds favor, um, what you're watching for is a bearish reversal candle. A bear sash, a bearish engulfing, a shooting star, something along those lines. And if you get that, that would then be your sell the D point. That would be your signal to go ahead and jettison that position out there. Until then, you probably want to continue to ride this to the upside out there. And again, we're taking a look at Tesla. And again, it's got some good volume as we uh, speak right now. Uh, what else can we share with David in Panama City? If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, that has a confirmed Gartley buy pattern that did that three weeks ago. Price is now regained or is attempting to regain the bottom of its profile. That's at 232.35. 
232, yeah, 232.35. So the next resistance level on a weekly basis, that is, David, for Tesla, is at around 237.83. That number is going to change slightly as price moves up and down. Just call it 238. So if price can close above that, then in the weekly chart, you would have a rising price asset above zero. Bullish conditions would say 250, 233 would be the next price target. On a monthly basis, price right now is trading above profile, above resistance. That's at 229, 229.53 out there. As long as price remains above that, 248.91 becomes the price target. So what do you do? If the gap gets filled, I think because it's an A to B equals CD to the upside, unless there's some other pattern that unfolds, you stay with it until you get that bearish reversal candle. Let's go take a look at some currency pairs out here. This is really for Stevie and really, I think, for everybody else that's out there. We've got the U.S. dollar index that is trading much lower. In fact, we'll switch over and take a look at that. Then I'll come back to take a look at the three primary currency pairs that make up 83% of that index. And here we're going to switch over, take a look at the U.S. dollar index, and you're going to see an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Now, the retracement on this is about a 55% retracement. When you do less than a 0.618, and this is certainly less than a 0.618, odds favor more than a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD to downside. But all of this is going to be predicated on the euro, the yen, and the pound out there. But as long as there's a close below 104.69, the price targets to the downside are 103.66 and 103.04. Once it gets to the 103.66 level, if there's a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a Gartley buy pattern. Now let's go take a look at the currency pairs that make up, or the three primary currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index and see what they're signaling to you and I. To begin with, we look at the euro. The top portion of the screen is the daily time frame. The bottom portion of the screen is the weekly time frame. You can see on a daily basis, this has a TD9 count bottom. Price right now is above that red oscillator and chains on it. It has struggled to stay above that. A close today above 1.194 accomplishes that task. And if price can close above, and this would be the A to B equals CD to the upside. That would then help to confirm that A to B equals CD to the downside in the dollar. All that the euro needs to do out here is close above 1.199. We get it close above that, then you can have an A to B equals CD to the upside in the euro, and that most certainly will send or should most certainly send the dollar lower. The U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, what that is uh, doing out here is, oh, wait a minute here. Jeez, I don't know why this thing does that. It's already in the... Uh, <clears throat> Mm, sorry about that. We're coming back to the euro. The euro is negating a sell the D point pattern. That sell the D point pattern actually formed out here in the trading day of November 16th. But notice here, if you take a look at that A to B line, and we move this over to the C point, see how price was along the left side of that? That was typical. That was telling us that likely this was going to do more than a one to one. Well, that more than a one is coming to fruition today. Now, where's the next price target area? Much like the advice that I provided a uh, David in Panama City, when you're in A to B. We'll see the upside once you've passed or passed the one to one level, a bearish reversal candle is going to confirm the next top. That top out here would be a Gartley sell pattern. Short of that, price will go target the extension levels. I don't have those factored in on this system here, but a price could be targeting all the way up at 1.1065. Now, in a weekly time frame, price closed above its oscillator and change line two weeks ago, back below it last week back above it this week, it's telling us about a target in that same area, 1.065. If we take a look at the Japanese yen, today would be a confirmation of a Rosemontum indicator top out there. You're trading below the green oscillator and change line, tells us it's lost its momentum, likely headed lower. That would then put strength or weakness into the U.S. dollar. As the Japanese yen on this chart here moves lower, it gets stronger, the dollar would get weaker. It's the opposite for the Great British Pound. This tells us that there is an A to B equals CD pattern that is forming. Let's go draw that in. And here we're going to use, um, going to use this swing point which is down here in the trading day of october the 26th that's our a point our b point out here looks like on the day of november 16th we're just simply going to go ahead and copy and paste we're going to use that cpa knowledge that stevie has out there and the question is can he pull it off he does pull it off he's a cut paste and assembler guy and that a to b equals cd pattern is going to take us up beyond the td nine count breakdown level that's at 1.2506. So that's where it should target. And if you can close above that, that would be both bullish, but it's just fulfilling that A to B equals CD pattern. Now we can see that the along the CD leg, 
prices along the strong side, that would be the left side of this pattern out there, that suggests a further move higher. If we take a look at uh, uh, the Great British Pound out here on its weekly time frame, this would be the first time we could have a close above on a weekly base. We don't have it just yet, but this could be the first time that we have a close above that oscillator and change line since July 28th. And if we get that, that would be a change in trend signal and suggest to move up to the 1.2873. So when we take a look at the currency pairs here, they're supporting a further move lower inside the U.S. dollar index. Let's go out to Niagara Falls and speak with Michael. Michael, thanks for calling. Thank Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hi, thanks for taking my call. My um, pleasure. I'm looking at the VIX yep. and the SVIX on the daily versus the weekly. And uh, I've noticed that, you know, tomorrow is the VIX expiration. There's a rollover from November to December, right? And I've also noticed in the past that whenever the CPI is released, there seems to be some kind of a trend change in the markets. So I'm thinking, I'm looking at the behavior of the SVIX on the daily today, and uh, it didn't hold the highs. Okay, I mean, it basically popped up at the open, and it's, it's been fading ever since. Right, right. Well, let's do this. Uh, we're about to go to break. Michael, please stay with us. We'll come back to you. We'll go ahead and analyze the uh, spot fix index for Michael in Niagara Falls. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Com. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're on the line with uh, Michael in Niagara Falls. We're taking a look at a spot volatility index. And one of the things that Michael had identified is the spot volatility index of behavior after the CPI report. Michael, you're in luck here. I was able to go uh -huh. back to my seasonal charts. And that's what I've got up on our screen right now. These are provided to me by the folks over at Seasonex. Great. If you're looking for a seasonal chart patterns, these guys have got it all. Now, what I'm able to uh -huh. do here, I've got 33 years worth of data of CPI reports. That's all that this chart is showing is the market behavior. This is the market behavior of the spot volatilinix, both 10 days prior and 10 days post. And you're sort of right in that, but now you're saying that what your experience has been that after the CPI report, the very next day you see the spot volatilinix move up. What I can share with you is what this looks like, uh, is that this shows us that actually in that red vertical line is today. And this shows us that when that consumer price uh, uh, index comes out, we typically see it move lower for three consecutive sessions out there. Now, that's over a 33-year period. We can, we can reduce that. We can go from 33 to 25, see if there's any difference. No, there's no difference there. That's still three days. Let's back it down to 15 years worth of data. Same thing when we take a look at 15 years worth of data. 10 years worth of data, the same thing. So what I think here is I think your observation is correct, but I think you're off by a, just a couple of days, at least based uh -huh. on this tool here. So this would then suggest, in fact, if the spot volatilinix is likely to head lower for the next couple, and this over the last 10 years, it's just been a two day. After the second day, then it moves higher. And if I look at five years worth of data, well, five years worth of data is perhaps what you're looking at. Uh, that shows uh -huh. that we move higher for one day and then back down. But I'd say that the larger trend is more than just, you know, five years worth of data, more likely the 10, the 15, the 25, along those lines out there. So I hope that that information at least helps you out. What is it that you're planning on doing with this information? Well, I mean, I'm trying to time the top here. Like, um, I, I, I'm quite quite surprised by this move we've had since October, you know, the 27th. And um, well, I've me... noticed I've looked at the charts before, and I've noticed that, like, for example, October 2022, um, CPI came in red hot. So initially they they, they sold it off, and but then the, the VIX came off, and the market rallied and had a nice rally into the end of the year. And I'm thinking maybe this could be the opposite, you know, the CPI cooling now, uh, and uh, the VIX may have bottomed, okay? And if we, I'm looking at the inverse, the SVIX, S-V-I-X, yeah. yeah. is yeah. not behaving well, okay? It made, it made its high at the open, and it just it's, it's sold off since, okay, yeah, so which is unusual. Right. So the, uh, uh, the SVIX, what is, uh, what is that tracking? That's uh, one times uh, short VIX. Short, okay. I, I would just take. Yeah. I would just like, stay I with like the... to trade this yeah. when the VIX is really high, like 30, 31. You see, uh, when it gets to a, a major limit, right? And I, I've noticed that there's a lot of activity on these things when the VIX tops out. You see, you just get in, you scale in, and you you just it, it's like it's like riding an elevator. It's just chuggy, 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 chugging along, you know, just right. slowly up and down, just trending upward. Yeah, well, let's do, let's do this here. What I've got on my screen right now, because you had made a comment, you were surprised about today's activity. So I want to help mm -hmm. uh, with the unsurprised, so to speak. And what I have up here right now is I've got, you know, you're talking about the VIX, or so really also, and you're trying to time the top. What that means is you're really trying to time the top of the S&P 500. So now we take mm -hmm. a look at the S&P 500, which is what I've got up on my screen here. I've got the S&P 500 shown in major, different major currencies. Uh, in the upper left, as an example, this is the S&P 500 in Canadian, in the Canadian dollars, in Chinese yuan. You can, you can see we're trading above uh, last uh, week's. Uh, now, these are weekly charts. We're trading above last week's high out there. That's a bullish outcome. If we take a look at the spot uh -huh. politics in euros out here, that's targeting. You're trading above last week's high. That's targeting the 42.55 level. If I come all the way down here on the right-hand side in the middle, that's the S&P 500 trading in yen. 
Now, let's just say, Michael, you're sitting over in Japan and you're trading the S&P 500 and it's your local currency. Uh, this has been in a full breakout mode for the last two weeks out here. So those people are not taking a look at the S&P 500 and saying they're sellers. Those people uh -huh. are bulls. And if you take a look at the S&P 500, priced in pounds out here, it's back to its highs, its all-time highs, from back on September 11th of 2023 out here. The point of this, and if we take a look at it, quite frankly, the S&P in Australian dollars, it's very close to its all-time high from September 4th of 2023. The point that I really want to make here is you can't just think in terms of, now, you might. I don't have Canadian dollars. I, I, I should put that out there for you. Uh, but that's your local currency base. So you're thinking in terms or should be thinking in terms of Canadian dollars. Traders in Japan, in Asia that are using uh, yen as their currency, they're looking at this instrument trading in their currency, not in U.S. dollars. The same thing for the folks in the U.K., the same thing in Australia out here. So what we have going on is we have international participation in this rally. And that's really important to understand. And it's really important to understand at times like this. Times like this, what do you mean, Stevie? Times like this when you're in war-torn areas out there, which Europe is participating in that, and in war-torn areas, money flees. Where's it going to go? Let's just say you're over in Europe, Michael. Where are you going to go ahead and park your assets to get it out of Dodge? Well, it turns out the U.S. is a pretty good place, even the U.S. dollar, even though it's pulling back today out there. So that's just simply the point I want to make and try to maybe take away a little bit of the confusion. We're looking at weekly charts out here. The rally participation, we cannot just think in terms of U.S. dollars only. If we do that, we're going to miss uh -huh. out on the message of the markets. Okay? Okay. Well, that's very educational. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. You bet. You bet. That was Michael in Niagara Falls. Let's go to our next request out here. This is coming in from G-Man, and G-Man wants to take a look at Apple. So we take a look at Apple out here. What do we know? Well, Apple is actually going to, this might help Michael in, in, uh, in Niagara Falls, Apple is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count pattern today. So to the extent that we believe that Apple can drive the markets, we really want to pay attention tomorrow to today's high. What is today's high so far? And I don't know what it will be at the end of the day, but today's high so far, 187.73. What should unfold out here? Am I on that screen? No, I'm not on that screen. Give me a second here. Sorry about that. I think that might have been Alan in my ear. That was the bell of, hey, Stevie, would you change your screens already out there? Let me make sure that that was it. Yep, thank you. So now we've got the charts for Apple. And what you can see, you can see the A to B equals CD pattern. I can get rid of that. But today is going to be the bar following bar number nine. And so if Apple can trade above tomorrow, can trade a close above, not trade above, but close above today's high, whatever that is, it negates that signal. It says it wants to continue to move higher. And in Apple's case, much like we took a look at for um, – for Tesla, you'd just be following the A to B equals CD pattern. The next bearish reversal candle would identify a sell the D point or a Gartley sell pattern. The weekly chart on Apple is bullish out there, G-Man. And on the monthly chart, you're trading into the sell zone. And that sell zone is right around the 186, where we're trading right now, 186 and change, and 198.23. So with regard to Apple, you just have to be careful. Why do you have to be careful? Well, when you make a top on a daily, you typically see a top on the short-term time frame chart. And voila, we've got a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. That says you've really got to watch 183.53. If price closes below that, Apple would be signaling to you and I that we've got a change in trend. Until then, eh, that's not the signal. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Tigers. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to trade right alongside Larry Pesavento? We'll wonder no more. Wednesday, November 15th, Larry Pesavento will be hosting a live trading webinar. From 8 a.m. to noon, look over Larry's shoulder as he analyzes potential trades and sets them up. Not only will you get a front row seat to the mind of a veteran trader, but you'll get to interact with Larry live as he plays his trades and goes through key material that has aided him in his profession. Go to the front page of TFNN.com, sign up for the service, and enjoy. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for Amazon. This is for G Motion inside the Tiger's Den. And on a daily time frame out here, uh, what do we have? We don't have any kind of topping uh, pattern or signal whatsoever. A couple of days ago, this is on the trading day of Friday, November 10th, uh, what price did was it negated its TD9 count top out there. So a price right now is taking on resistance, G Motion, and that is the uh, bearish shooting star candle that confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top on a weekly basis the week of September 15th. 15th. And that high out there is 145.86. Now we're trading above it right now, but you want to see a close above it at week's end. If you get a close above it, that tells you we likely move higher out there as you'd be above all resistance areas. That's your resistance right now on the weekly time frame. Of course, the Rhodes Mintum indicator at this moment in time is still triggered. So if there were another bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a top as well. On the monthly time frame, well, the monthly time frame very likely is going to confirm a TD9 count top in November. It will complete that pattern in December out there. So that says just be careful of those patterns. But those patterns need to get confirmed that there's a potential or that pattern, I should say, on the monthly time frame. You're going to see some type of change on a daily and a weekly time frame. And even on a 30-minute chart, which we don't have right now. So Amazon looks like it wants to continue to trade higher, but G-Motion has got to deal with that resistance up at that September 15th high, 145.86. So I hope that that helps you out. Nancy wants to take a look at Microsoft out here. So I'm really glad that we're taking a look at Microsoft, Apple, um, and uh, uh, in the case of Microsoft, just like in Apple, it's going to complete a TD9 count top today. So again, we don't want to get too euphoric here. Um, and you know, we, we took a look at what we've been anticipating, at least what I've been anticipating for the New York Stock Exchange and how it has typically formed its tops when that price oscillator gets up to that level out there. And, and I'm not talking about like some type of, you know, well, I don't know what I'm talking about just yet. Yeah, that's probably a true statement, period. Uh, I, I was 
was going to say. I don't know what kind of, whether that's a the the top for the rest of the year or not. I I don't want to I don't want to go down that path here. But what I can share with you with regard to Microsoft Nancy, and you're looking for short term resistance and support. More importantly, what you need to be focused on today is the fact that it's going to complete a TD9 count top. Now, what should take place is price should pull back to its oscillator and change line. That's at 364.79. A word of caution on that. And I'm glad that Michael was talking about the VIX, and then he mentioned about you know it, it seems unusual and that led me into sharing with each of you out there hey guess what take a look at how the s p is trading in other currencies out there because otherwise we're going to only think of ourselves and if we only think of ourselves that usually doesn't lead to a very great outcome out there so this pattern could get negated and now all that requires that's a daily td9 count is a close above today's high whatever that is the monthly weekly chart looks very good the monthly chart looks very good out here so you just got to be concerned about the next few days action but if price blows them up today's high then microsoft continues to head higher so how would you trade microsoft right now wouldn't do anything uh with it on a uh, 30 minute if you're not in it if you take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart here for microsoft we've got a td9 count top that is uh, completing as we speak right now so see how this pattern unfolds now that's the 30 minute bar that's going to complete at noon see what that high is by noon if price is close and above it on a 30 minute basis that topping signal gets negated and tells you about a strong upward momentum move for that time frame let's go take a look at palantir this is for uh, duncan steve inside the tiger's den pltr is a ticker symbol and we take a look at it what do we see we see an a to b equals cd to the upside as has been confirmed with volume i don't know let's go find out but the b point was a trading day of november 7th and that did volume of 56 million shares and yesterday it was passed with 92 million shares so there's a gigantic a to b equals cd to the upside now i'll type that in but before I do that, I'm really just looking at the weekly chart and the monthly chart. And the weekly chart shows resistance here. So price is trading into its Rosemont indicator top bearish shooting star candle formation from August the 4th. That had 468 million. It's only Tuesday. So I don't know how to really do the straight line math, but you're at 121 out there. Again, that's going into 468. So pay attention to that volume. But resistance here, regardless of the A to B equals CD pattern, Duncan, you've got resistance at the top of that weekly candle, and that's up at 2024. If price is able to take that out, then that daily A to B equals CD pattern, we'll go ahead and draw that in. Well, Actually, there's there's there would be a couple of them. I'll use the more aggressive A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, that didn't work. Nice job there, Stebo. That could look like this. And that is certainly a straight line. And we're just going to move this all the way up here. And if this comes to fruition, this says that Palantir gets up into the 2268 level. We are not willing to make that commitment unless price takes out that bearish shooting star. And that needs a close on a weekly base of 2024. So, Duncan, hope that that helps you out. Thanks much for the request. Satish inside the Tiger's Den wants to go take a look at ticker symbol LIN. That's Lindy PLC out here. We take a look at this. This has got an A to B equals CD pattern. Was it confirmed with volume? Well, the B point, the one that's labeled bar number seven, the trading day of November 3rd did volume of 1.3 million shares. It was passed with 1.378, and then it was yesterday with 1.4. So now you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Let's go take a look at where that gives us a price projection to on the daily time frame. Now, this is just an estimate here. I'm not uh, trying to be exact right to the T. Uh, but I'm pretty darn close to that T. So the one-to-one -one area would get us up, Satish, towards the 418 level. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly had a TD9 count top that was negated last week. That swing point, which was from August 4th, had done volume of 8.2 million shares. Last week, the volume to the upside was 8.4 million shares. So you've got a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside in the weekly and the daily. The monthly is negating a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top formed in July of 2023 as long as price closed above 391.61 this looked like this wants to continue to move to the upside now on a 30 minute basis i see no top at all so satish stay with lynn it looks like a winner to steve-o let's take a look at uh, broadcom avgo is the ticker symbol now i've got to start putting these in here because i've only give myself a uh, four to uh, load up on but this is for bogart dog and he wants to know is this breaking the consolidation well whether it is or it isn't, Bogart, that's not what I'm going to focus on today for you. Instead, what I'm going to focus on for you today, much like we did for uh, G-Man with regard to Apple and Nancy with regard to Microsoft, and you guess what you've got today, too. Barn, you've got a TD 9 count top that is going to 
complete today. So this is special. These are these are three of the top ten instruments, top eight instruments, quite frankly, inside of the NDX 100. Each now with TD nine count tops. The daily doesn't have that. But it's really important what's going on in the underlying instrument. So mark today's high, uh, Bogart. And if price close above it, it tells you this wants to move higher. The weekly is trading above all resistance. So too is the monthly. It's the daily that's going to be the fly in the financial ointment. So watch today's high, whatever that is. We can come back to the consolidation breakaway. I see an A to B equals C to the upside as well. That would say that a bearish reversal can on a daily basis would generate a sell the D point pattern. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back from this break. We're going to take a look at IBRX for art and the EEM. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go take a look at IBRX. This is for art. Art, uh, let's take a look at this chart. What is this doing here? We've got them up on our screen right now. So IBRX is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. It's got a TD9 count top. Price is in a bullish structured profile. It's above the center there, and it's above a green oscillator and change line. Art, IBRX should make it move up to resistance. First level of resistance is going to be 381. Above that, it's going to be the swing point that formed that TD9 count top. That was on the day of November 3rd. That high out there is 405. 
Weekly chart looks good. Monthly chart is dealing with resistance. That's resistance of the top of its profile. That's at $3.50 out there. So overall, things look like it wants to move higher for IBRX. Thank you so much for the request. The next one is to take a look at Ford. This is for Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den as well. Now, Ford here, I don't really have a bottom pattern per se that I can see. I need more time. We had to look at it. Doesn't matter. Price is trading above the top of its daily profile. And Duncan, as long as price can close above 1032 and certainly do it for two consecutive days, price ought to start making a run for that gap, that gap that formed on October the 27th. I see an A to B equals CD to the downside in Ford, but it looks to me like uh, it has not achieved at least that one-to-one -one level out there. So it does not have a completed pattern to the downside on a weekly basis, and price is below its red oscillator and change line. So Ford is, uh, yeah, I don't think, uh, I, I think we're seeing just a nice little bit of a counter trend move right now. And on a monthly basis, price is also below support, and that's the bottom of its profile as well. So I'd be careful with regard to Ford, Duncan, Steve, but on a daily basis, and you're just trading it, Things look okay as we speak right now. Lastly, I guess we'll close out the show. Take a look at the EEM out here. The EEM right now, it looks like it's going to form an A to B equals CD to the upside. And that is passing the B point that formed out here on November 6th. That B point did volume of 32 million shares. Today, so far, this has done 16 million shares. So it looks like it'll have the volume. The one-to-one -one price projection would take us up into the 4061 level. If I look at the weekly chart. Uh, there is uh, nothing to suggest that that can't happen, nor is that the case with regard to the monthly chart. So watch that daily out there. Watch today's close. Looks like you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. Folks, thanks so much for joining me on Terrific Tuesday. Hope to see you on wonderful Wednesday. But please have a terrific day. Be safe out there. I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care now.